Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Sarah and in this short video Jones Hussein and I talk about why fat is a better fuel than carbohydrate. If you're interested in some of the things we talk about like deuterium and why more water is made in the mitochondria when you use fat then check out my videos on deuterium and my video with Beth Zupek-Kania on the biophysics of a keto diet. If you want to watch the full interview then head on over to Jones's channel and I've put the links in the description because he's a very interesting and smart guy, well worth a listen. So there's a question of whether fat or carbohydrates is the best fuel source. And I've looked at it in terms of anthropology through Western egg crisis work, through, you know, genetics, through um, um, glycation and insulin, you know, the metabolic approach. But then when I stumbled upon you and the quantum biological um, you know, explanation to which one is best, especially in modern society, you know, I got a clear answer. It became very obvious. So the question is, Sarah, uh, which energy source is best, fat or carbs? There are actually, uh, we can start at the basics with this. There's the Baltimore study, which is on men and women long term. And they found that those who were fat burners had better overall sort of health and weight and things like that. So there are very long term studies. Then if we think about ancestors, like you said, um, carbohydrates are not available all year round anyway. So there would have been a time when our ancestors didn't have access to them. So we're definitely biologically primed to use fat or ketones. Um, it's correct that what you said about insulin and glycation, but that would be more the processed or refined carbohydrates because they're completely different to say a freshly picked apple from your own garden versus um, Pringles and stuff manufactured in a uh, in a factory that's got horrible quantum information. Then we can talk about something called deuterium and fats are very low in deuterium and carbs are high and seed oils are very high. And deuterium for the moment is just, we'll say, heavy hydrogen and it's heavy. So it has a metabolic burden in different parts of the body, for example, in the mitochondria, which we'll talk about, and then in hormonal systems. And then the other important thing about fat is it provides more electrons than uh, glucose. And that means that there's going to be more ATP production, which is one energy source in the mitochondria. But also when the mitochondria use fat as a fuel, they're going to make more metabolic water. So we can say using fat makes one equivalent of water. Protein is about 0.65 and then carbohydrates are half. So we get twice as much water as in metabolic water that the mitochondria make that's deuterium depleted, which is literally our life force in many ways. It's sort of our, our water battery. Everything in biology is covered in water or exclusion zone or fourth phase water. So everything inside our bodies happens through the medium of water. And true hydration doesn't mean drinking eight glasses of tap water a day. That's wildly from the truth. And then finally, there's another interesting reason that if we think about the inside the mitochondria, uh, there's a chain of proteins that the electrons have to go down. So we get the electrons and the protons, as in the H plus from food, and the electrons go down the electron transport chain. So it's like an electric current and they interact with these proteins along the way and then water gets produced. And then there's another step where ATP is uh, produced. When electrons from fat go down this chain, they jump over the first complex and they go straight in at number two, and then they go all the way down to the end of the chain. And the reason this is really important is that complex number one in the mitochondria leaks electrons and electrons that are escaping or leaking, we can think of them as free radicals, which when it's uncontrolled, it's inflammatory, but also it's... Um, a, a big reason why people could get something like diabetes or obesity or um, inflammation or sickness, because these electrons are escaping the ones that came from glucose rather than going down the chain to make electric current. So there's that very sort of deep reason. And I think we could probably loop back and then unpack each of these ones in a little bit more detail, because this was sort of an introduction so people know what we're going to talk about. And I wanted it to be understandable to everybody. So maybe, Jones, you could uh, re represent yourself as how your listeners and what they might ask based on these different reasons that I've given of why fat is a 
better fuel and glucose. I'm not saying that people should avoid carbs forever, not one minute, but the fat should be the primary fuel. Yeah, I mean, for me, what, what I was hinting at, like what I've learned from quantum biology that's really answered this question is, well, fat is low in deuterium. It gives us more electrons and it gives us more water. And those three things are extremely crucial. And so that's why it must be superior. And since we're losing water through modern society, we're losing electrons, um, and we're getting a bunch of deuterium into us as well through modern society. If you live in modern society, it's probably a very wise choice to be using fat 